Good morning everyone and uh, a very happy new year to 2022, our first online service of the year and in fact our first uh, meeting together at Basvik. But I just want to wish everyone uh, the very warmest of greetings and uh, happy new year to everyone as we, um, as usual, it's always, you know, start a new year and begin a new year. And I, I wanted to to say something, I've had one or two weeks to think about it because we weren't able to meet last week. So I want to talk uh, and I want to share this morning on something that I think is relevant to our lives, it's relevant right now to all of us, and that is waiting on God, waiting on the Lord. And in certain ways and in many ways, the church has come to all stop. Um, there are so many things um, that we'd like to do or we want to do that we can't do um, because of COVID. And I want to look at the periods and some of the people who waited. Let me just begin with a Proverbs 23, 19. He says, listen, my son, listen, my daughter, and be wise. Set your heart on the right path. That's what we want to do this year, set our heart on the right path. And we want to uh, go on with the Lord and some of us will be feeling full of beans and uh, some of us less so if you're like me it's always hard after Christmas to uh, get some uh, you know to begin again um, it was a tough year last year um, it, it's a tough time for me right now with my dad being requiring you know 24 7 care uh, but at the same time a sense of the nearness and closeness of a God of love and mercy and his nearness to us. And, and I, I want to set my heart and our church's heart on that right path, the, that straight path that is set before us. Psalm 37 verse 7, reading from the NIV, says this. This is the heart of what I want to share this morning. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked, wicked schemes. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. It's a great verse of scripture, isn't it? It's a great verse to uh, understand God's ways in your life and mine. And, uh, you know, some of you, uh, some of the, the, the more older members have, have been able, unable to do most of the things that you've been used to doing in previous years. Uh, COVID and its longevity, uh, if you were like me, I thought it would probably last a few months and somehow blow away. Well, it hasn't. And uh, akin to holding a glass of water, its longevity is creating, I think, more stress into our culture and on many of our lives. And it's its longevity um, that really requires us to be patient and to wait before the Lord. And we have lots of great examples of that. Now, we live in one of the most technologically advanced cultures that has ever existed, don't we? Uh, we, we are able to keep extraordinarily busy and achieve things that probably no other generation could ever have thought could be achieved. The, supercomputers that are working now within a few years will have driverless cars electric cars it's going to change uh, the transport industry and these the, these are the things that are coming uh, if if not putting someone um, even on mars these technological things these busy things and yet here in contrast to all of that be still and wait patiently be still before the Lord and wait patiently. And I, I'm, I'm glad I live today. I, I'm, not re I'm not saying, well, let's go back to having the horse and cart and living off the land or anything. But I am saying that the longevity of COVID is, is forcing you and me to be still and be patient, particularly those of you who are activists, who want to get stuck in and, and getting older and thinking, you know, I don't get these years back. And it forces us, it forces you and me to wait patiently before the Lord. And this isn't, this isn't some um, new thing that's come along. And we'll look at some biblical examples 
This is the way that God often treats his people. Um, and, I, and I know that it, it's easy to say this, but technologically, certainly in the Western church, we're able to do so much. Um, we're able to rearrange the tables, if you like, and the, and the deck chairs. We can do so much uh, with, with the technology that's been given to us, and we can build this, and we can go there and speak here. We can move you know, all across the world. And yet at the same time, uh, Christianity in the Western world is, is in decline. Um, we, we see less people converted. We're seeing less power and presence, healing the sick and miracles. And I'm saying that not to, to, to be overly critical, but to say if it, if it was true, it'd be in the newspapers, it'd be in the local rag. We'd see Christianity as it is in uh, much of the global south um, right now. Because our, our technological, all the help that we can, we, or we feel that we can give God uh, is, isn't worth very much. And he says, be still and wait patiently for me. And I, I think that's the season that we're in. And it's a forced season on you and me in many cases. But the Lord is doing something in this season in your life. It isn't that you're somehow sidelined or you're not able to get on with things or that this or and thus or so. No, the Lord uses these seasons. He uses these seasons ultimately because at the end of them, comes something that he wants to do. And in the meantime, he's refined your character. He's removed that sense of, of you being able to help him out and do something. God wants his people, you and me, to be in love with him, to be dependent upon him, and in many ways to be like little children before him, just open-mouthed, ready to receive everything he has for us. Now, that's my New Year message in, in brief. That's what I think um, is being forced on us. And that, that's okay with me. I mean, let's wait on the Lord. And, and much of the time in the last few years has felt like that for me. Waiting, you know, hearing um, from the Lord, uh, dreams, visions, prophecies. We're pregnant with those things that, that God is once again going to move by his spirit. But it's not under our control when he does that. And I can tell you that when God moves by his spirit, in a moment, everything changes. Everything changes in a moment. Your faith will change, your desires, your hopes, everything will change. As, as you move up a gear into that, that place of, of, of closer nearness and presence with the power of God. But we're being forced at this moment to believe for those things and to hope for those things, and to be refined in the process of waiting, which is normal um, for God. So if you're feeling, I, I want to do this, I want to do that, but I can't, then you're in good company. We'll look at some of those people, the kind of company that you're in. We looked at Daniel earlier um, last year. And Daniel 12, very, I'm reading this one from the English Standard because I don't like the NIV version. But it says in, in Daniel 12, 4, But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. We're in that period. Daniel saw past the coming of the Messiah right up until the end, right up until the second coming of the Messiah. He saw this. No other culture has seen technology advance and to keep on advancing at the level it is now. And it makes us want everything instantly. Um, you know, we want instant coffee, don't we? That's, that's what it's called, Nescafe, instant. You know, you can have it like that. You don't worry about all this, you know, pressing the beans or something. And No, 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 you can just put it, here's instant coffee. And here's a microwave that'll heat up your food even quicker. Here's some instant meals. You, don't worry about cooking, stick it in the microwave for one and a half minutes, you know. Remember to pierce the lid. You know. Everything's instant. We want instant church. We want instant church. We want instant growth. We want instant this. Because that's the, that's the culture that prevails, you see. That we've, we've made this culture because technology has allowed us. But, but it, it, and again, I'm not going back to the horse and cart, but it isn't God. 
That isn't how God works. When the instant happens, there's long, usual years of preparation. And that preparation for you and me is character. An old-fashioned word, character, isn't it? But God's into building your character. And certainly, if you look back a year or two at your life, what you should be seeing is stuff's come up that you've had to deal with, or that you're, you're drawing closer to God because of this period of waiting patiently. Why would God do this? Because he, he wants to close down the church? No, just the opposite. He wants the church to succeed. It's his church. He wants you to succeed. He wants your ministry and gifting to, to be propelled forward. But it's his timing. And he's working on you and me. And uh, when I look at the church and I see, um, you know, that, that, that the, way it, the way it is right now, then so be it. We wait patiently for the Lord and uh, have some patience because God's plans are much bigger than ours. So what does it do? It tests our faith. Do we believe what he said? Or we just, you know, it's not that important to us. Um, the church isn't that important. Now you might say, well, Chris, if all that's, if all that's true, why do you keep doing church? And uh, we keep doing it for several reasons. One is because it's in, in person, it's good to meet together. I know not everyone can meet together because of COVID, you know, and, and how you, you uh, feel about that, or you're working with people who are vulnerable, so you need to stay away from people. It's one reason. Um, a, a personal reason for me is that when so many teachers and medics put themselves in harm's way and police and, and have to do their jobs, I'm, I'm not going to not do mine. Um, and, you know, as time has gone on, the uh, COVID has, and, uh, has become less, of course. But, uh, but I think it's, it's the, uh, the duty of pastors to be in front of people, honestly, and to preach the word in season um, and out of season. There was a, a man called Cyprian, I meant to look him up before the talk, and uh, I think from second century um, early church, who in the midst of persecution, he was a bishop, but he ran away from the persecution. Then he came back again. And uh, his people were uh, less than enthused to have him back as bishop as they'd faced persecution. Imagine that you'd been persecuted or a member of your family had been persecuted or even killed or murdered in that and then the bishop who's run away comes back and wants to take his place so you can understand that they weren't very happy and I've always remembered that and always wanted to be um, doing what you're meant to be doing there's a couple of reasons why um, we continue to do um, what we do so it's character building that's the lesson we're, we're learning God's building character why because when he places his spirit on people, when God anoints people, and it does amaze me, he, he will often anoint very goofy, brand new Christians who are, do extraordinary things. But the anointing of God, the presence of God always rests best, spiritual gifts always rest best on people who've matured a bit and have character. That isn't to say that God always works that way because he doesn't. But God, I, I think, in this next move, is looking for people who are of faith and tested and um, believe him and have been through some refinement. And this is, this is the process, I think, that this wait patiently for the Lord. We're just waiting, waiting, doing stuff, getting on with life, but waiting for him. Lord, come and do more. We see it with Jesus, of course, and we'll look at him, but... But in Philippians, the, again, a, a very well-known verse, a, a hymn, um, who in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Jesus didn't grasp at things. He, he didn't grasp for power. He didn't grasp for anything, even though he was God, fully God. He didn't grasp. He let God have his way. He submitted to his Father in heaven, as we are to do the same. We cannot grasp for things. We simply allow God to be God and let him work in our lives. In Samson, um, it says this, Samson went down to Timnah and saw there a young Philistine woman 
when he returned, he said to his mum and dad, I, I've seen a, full, a Philistine woman in Timnah. Um, go and get her for me. I want her as my wife. His father and mother replied, isn't there an acceptable woman among your relatives or among your people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Samson said to his father, get her for me. She's the right one. And Samson is an example of grasping something that Jesus never did. He's an example of someone who's extraordinarily anointed, someone that was uh, used by God incredibly, but someone whose character is terrible, whose childlikeness really in, in uh, being spoiled and wanting, there's a woman, lustfully looks at her, I want her as my wife, doesn't matter who she is, unwilling to wait. Well, um, for whatever reason, um, Samson changed as the years went on eventually. Um, but I think God's changing us first. Um, when God pours out his spirit, are we, we're going to be like the Corinthian church. Are we going to be full of ourselves? Are we going to be braggadocious and arrogant? We consider ourselves superior to other churches and other peoples. Are we going to have infighting and immorality? Or are we going to have leaders who are constrained and persevere and love Jesus and point the way to him and become lowly and favour other people? That's the point that I think God wants. So God always uses waiting. So Joseph's sold into slavery at the age of 17. What a disaster. Carted off to Egypt, betrayed by his brothers. And then he's in prison for anything from 2 to 13 years until he becomes sort of vice regent to Pharaoh after being in prison because of a false accusation with Potiphar. So he spent 2 to 13 years in prison and certainly the time between 17 um, and 30 are years of waiting and refining and character building for Joseph. And he is an incredible character to look at in the Old Testament. But he was forced to wait. And Jesus too. We know next to nothing of Jesus as a teenager, but we do know he was in Jerusalem. We do know that he grew in maturity. We do know his mum and dad were looking for him. Where is he? And he said, don't you know, I must be about my father's business in Luke 2. I, I've got to be about my dad's business. He was going. He said, well, wh why, why, did he, why did Jesus wait till he was 30? Why? There's, there's always, e even the Son of God, uh, wait patiently for the Lord. Don't grasp. Don't grasp. If God wants to give us something or give you something, he'll give it you. You don't have to grasp for it. We don't have to be like the world, you know, climbing the greasy pole, pushing people out the way or playing politics or anything. We are before the God of heaven and earth. And when we're bowed down, he'll lift us up. He'll come close to us. Because the goal of the life is what? To know God. The goal is to have a relationship, a living, personal relationship with Jesus that grows deeper and it will grow deeper and it will grow deeper as your character gets better through trials and tribulations of which for many of us this is one it's you know I, I said it's a very difficult time in my life right now to see the dad who's protected me all my life and uh, needing 24 7 care yet at the same time God's spoken to me and 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 said that he's showing mercy and he's going to show my dad mercy. And he is showing our family mercy. And I see what I see with my eyes. But I also know what I've heard from the Lord. And it's, it's a difficult time, but I know that I can feel the presence of God um, comforting me and drawing close to me. In this time, as well as the times that we're all going through. Moses, another great example, of course, by faith. From Hebrews 11, verse 24, it says, By faith Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as Pharaoh's son. Sorry, sorry, the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value 
than all the treasures of Egypt, because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger, he persevered because he saw him who is invisible. Now there's a lot of theology there, 40 years when he went to Midian. Moses, 40 years of waiting. That's a long time. That's, that's a lifetime almost to be waiting. And you think, well, what did God do with Moses in those 40 years? He got on with life. He got married. He had children. He worked. But it was a long time. And, and that Moses, I suppose, came to the place where he cannot rescue his own people. But at the same time, his faith grew. His faith grew that God would rescue them, and God did rescue his own people. And so this waiting time for some of us, as we wait patiently for the Lord, there's, there's a result at the end of it if we'll do that. If we'll quit kicking and screaming and moaning and groaning. See, another example is the Apostle Paul. He's in prison, and we think the letters were written probably around 60 to 62 AD, and he's a prisoner in Rome. But you'd look at that and you'd think, what a waste of time. Lord, can you please hurry up? There's people to be saved. There's churches to be planted. There's, there's, there's kingdom to advance. And the, and the Lord's hanging back. Everything's slowed up. But again, if I, if I was to look at the Western world, it's, it's failed that the Western church is, is pretty much a failure compared to the, what the New Testament talks about. A God who's promised us and prophesied greater works will you do. So I think it's quite in keeping with God to hold things up, to, to kind of crank the lever back and call, cause the church at all stop. Say, so wait patiently for me, because I've seen your ministry, I've seen your technology, I've seen what you can do, you know. But I want you to show, I want to show you what I can do. And, and as we wait for him, that's at the end of it. So at the end of Moses was deliverance for the people. At the end of Joseph was vice regent, you know, to, to second only to Pharaoh of Egypt. The Apostle Paul, who's in prison, you know, and writes the letters to the Ephesians and Philippians and Colossians and Philemon. Letters that we're able to read today. Two years in prison that wasn't wasted. But you think, Paul, you can heal the sick with your handkerchief. You can cast out demons. You can preach the gospel. Oh my gosh, we need to get you out of prison and send you to the rest of the world. Not just to Rome. But God's plans are more expansive than ours. They're bigger than ours. They may be achieved slower than we would like, but to God, a day is like a thousand years. God is working, is my point. He's working in your life. Even when you look and think it's too slow, wait patiently for him. He will act, he will fulfill the things he said to you, the dreams he's given to you. But you have to persevere and believe in faith. Because why? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. We know that Abraham, another one, waited 15 or 20 years for, for Isaac. And of course, Ishmael was in the way and he pretended Sarah wasn't his wife. And yet we told in Hebrews, unwavering faith. By faith, he believed, you see. By faith, we have to believe. In a hope that we can't see. Not just in the hope for what God's going to do in this life, but of course in the next one. Which is why Moses could give up all the riches of Egypt. All the sexual immorality that he could have had. All the esteem, all the power. He laid it down. Reminds us of Jesus, doesn't it? Who is also our example. So don't fret when you see people succeeding or the wicked succeeding. It's a short period of time and uh, that's it. So let me just finish with this. It says, <clears throat> for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, 
growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom um, of light. For this reason, since the day we heard, we're praying for you, to fill you with the knowledge of his will. So I'm going to close there. That's, that's what God wants. You can look that up and find that uh, from the Apostle Paul. Um, God wants us to persevere. God wants us to wait patiently for him. And, and that may be another year. That's, that's always going to be the case. Because it's not about our efforts. The kingdom of God doesn't advance more because of our efforts. The kingdom of God doesn't advance because of social action or cultural change. They're just byproducts of God moving. He moves by his spirit. No one comes to the Father unless the Father draws them, you know. When I am lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. That's the goal. God's drawing people. We get involved, but we wait for him. We wait for him. And so if it feels like it's been a tough year, it's been a tough year for me, I have to say, but if it feels like for you it's been a tough year or you're looking ahead and you think, oh, you know, I'm not seeing light at the end of this right now. The Lord's working in you. He's changing you. He's molding you. He's building character in you for purposes that will last into eternity. Amen. So God bless you. I hope my words bring some um, understanding of God's ways. It was a, something that I, I felt I really wanted to say um, this morning. And um, let's, let's pray. Let's pray for this year. Uh, pray for us if you're watching this online at Basvik as we uh, will be together for the first time this year. And pray God's fulfillment to this uh, will come about. Heavenly Father, I, I just pray, Lord, as we begin this year to fill us with joy. To fill us with the perseverance and the long-suffering that we will need, Lord, to... Uh, navigate uh, COVID and meeting family members and all, all of the normal trials and tribulations of life. But that, Lord, you're changing us and making us more like your Son and preparing us, Lord, for a day when your Spirit will move increasingly. So, Lord, pour your Spirit out on us now. Pour your Holy Spirit out on us. Draw near to us and comfort us. Bless us, O God, we pray. Have mercy on us, O God, we pray. And let the Spirit come and let him move over you and on you and in you. You're a child of God and you belong. You have an inheritance that will last forever. So rejoice and give him this year. Give him this year. Amen. I'm going to fast and pray a little bit next week if any of you want to join me in spirit, um, merely to draw nearer to God and to hear his voice. And uh, if you're not connected with us by email um, or church suite or Facebook, do like us and join up and uh, we can keep you in touch with what we're doing and what we're going on. So Happy New Year 2022. God bless you and uh, have a fruitful and prosperous week in the name of the Father, the Son, and our precious Holy Spirit. Amen.